Hello, welcome to Kimbele Mbele podcast. I had to be corrected enough times. Si Vimbele Mbele, ni kama tuko wawili hapa. So hey, Kimbele Mbele is the name. Um, my name is Linda. It's good to be here with you. Today I'm joined by the lovely Miss Stella. But watch Adri. Adri, introduce your money because hey... <laughs> This is why you're here. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Hi guys. Uh, my name is Stella and it's so good to be here at the Kim Belimbele podcast. Mm. Like this is such a mouthful. Kim Belimbele. Yeah. Kim Belimbele. Front yeah. runners. That's what it translates to basically. Front runners. Yeah. The most happening youth church. Yeah. You know? All right. So today we're going to be talking about a very interesting thing called letting go. So, um, <laughs> Ningetaka, we start by asking the lovely Miss Stella, have you ever struggled with letting go? And if so, in what context? Because Ooh. ni mingi. Ni mingi cheka oh. sana. Uh, hmm. I think maybe in like three categories, right? Okay. Um, I think flashing back today, I was like um, struggling to let go of like my perceived, I don't call it career path okay. or like life <laughs> Wait, what did you want to be? <laughs> okay, disclaimer, like, she's a pastor. <laughs> but... What did you want to be? Oh my gosh. Man, uncovered. Uh, <laughs> at some point, I really did a bit of modeling. So I really enjoyed hey. the arts, right? Mm. So yeah. like photography, modeling, design world, oh. um, graphic design okay. um, stuff. Mm. So like I actually used to do like those portfolios and stuff like that. Oh my gosh. Um, so I didn't like, know this about you. Be- okay, the mo- I knew about dancing. Yeah. Because yeah, I well, the dancing in a okay, bit. Okay. Um. So like, I think I had like this mindset mm-hmm. of being like this entrepreneur that does many things, yeah. but combines the passions mm-hmm. into into what earns money for me, right? Mm-hmm. Um. Because <laughs> we are motivated by the monies a lot, right? Like, I think ideally, I really, really wanted to have a bank account that screams. <laughs> <laughs> loud I'm successful. enough I'm successful. <laughs> that I got it yeah you mm. know so I got vanity well, it's like I'm in the who Lord delivered you and, thank uh, God every day he's delivering yeah. me mm-hmm. <laughs> you know so I think that was like one of those portions yeah. um and then I think it sort of cascades into like the second part okay um because I feel or rather I now keep understanding that like your passions plus mm. purpose plus like your daily I think what you end up doing for work, right, mm. so that you can earn a living and, you know, not steal from peeps, mm. um, sort of cascades into that space of then figuring out a career path or okay. something like that. So I think yeah. for a moment there, I probably struggled. Okay. Um, defining or finding myself fitting into a space where, oh, yeah, this is how I'm actually showing up to... This is my life now. Yeah, this is my life now. Yeah. Um, and yet... It's still wholesome, like you're actually showing up and learning and discovering yourself on that journey. Mm. And it's wholesome, but yet this is actually not what I thought I would be doing. Okay. You know, so I think I probably, yeah, had one of those, my gosh, I'm letting go of yeah. my wheel Your dream. and my dreams yeah. and all of that. So that's one. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's cascaded into one, right? Mm-hmm. And then probably a second one for me was that, right? Mm-hmm. I wasn't, I keep telling people this, I'm very, very introverted. <laughs> 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 okay, I find that hard to believe, but okay, let's, uh, but let's the go with that is, for now. Yeah, you know how I think a lot of people have like all of this overthinking about yeah. how they are perceived and how they mm. appear and stuff like that. Okay. And probably part of it is once you start like going for therapy sessions, mm. like a therapist tells you, or some of this are ingrained in perhaps, you mm. know, what kind of school you went to right. um, or what the culturing behind that was like. Yeah. And so I think I was a bit shy because I okay. probably went to or was exposed to schools that everybody else seemed like they had the identity thing figured out. Mm. And I think it took me a while to have that figured out, mm. right? So dance for me, now that you had um, killed it there, mm. is or was where I would hide comfortably, okay. that I was visible, but I didn't have to say a thing. Okay. Because uh, I was actually thrown, not thrown out, but <laughs> I, <laughs> Wait, I used to write... You were thrown out? Yeah. Like, I mean, I, so I was one of those little nerds who would read books and had okay. a bit of really good diction. So okay. I could write, like, really mm. well for debate club. Mm. But every time I was put up <laughs> on a stage, like, I actually remember oh. this so clearly. Yeah. There's a time um, I was called up and I was, like, Wait. you know, sharing my points and mm. whatnot. But I froze. Oh. Like I had a really good, you know, debate, whatever thing written out. This is like out. those ones for me in the mirror and then me in person. Thank you very like much. Me in the bathroom, 
mean verses. Exactly. I understand. You know, so like the like stage fright was like really, really bad. Okay. And so just walking through that space, we are finally learning to actually be okay with opening yourself up yeah. um, to speak in front of people and mm. not bite your tongue mm. or swallow your words and just go numb. Mm. Yeah, so like that's a big deal. So that's why I thought like dance would actually right. really like Did make money and whatnot. So the transition between okay, how I didn't end up dancing was because of an injury, like oh, okay. fell okay. and had to have a knee surgery mm. and stuff. Mm. And I like, think that really blew blew up like my oh my gosh, this was like a set path it was a thing. forever and ever. And I was yeah. like really really good at dance. Yeah. And so I think that also had me struggle with like letting go of my mm. gosh, like I had mm. this craft right. that I had honed for a few right. years and I was gonna make, and I was making some money out of it actually. Right. And then now all of a sudden, doctors are like, mm, no, you gotta slow down, Simple you can't do cannot this. cannot happen. Yeah, okay. so I think that's the second one. Right. Um, then maybe a third one is like relationships. And by <laughs> this, <laughs> It's, Don't get personal. Really it's too soon, too soon, too soon. Um, the healing is still. The healing is, is getting there. Hey. Oh my god. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And I wouldn't just talk about like relationships with like you know the opposite uh, sex or whatever, mm. but like over and over, like slowly learning that the relationships you had last year or the year before yeah. sometimes change with transitions. Right. And I think it's really hard to let go of this ideology you had mm. that this person has to be my inner, inner core mm. person. Right. But yet the transitions perhaps they're going through in terms of either they've moved mm. countries even mm. or whatever, mm. or perhaps what they're doing in life currently yeah. means we can't even hang out as much as we right. used to. And so I have to let go of the ideology because mm. I'm one of those people, I like, like I treasure Stukai the too. little call, you know, <laughs> like I'm your main person, Let's call stay. me every day or whatever okay. else, you know. So like letting go of certain okay. relationships over yeah. seasons, yeah. like really changes your perspective. Right. And, and it's, it's, it's hard. Like, I think it's hard. Uh, <laughs> no yeah. kidding. Uh, yeah. No, you so, said relationships and I started thinking about it. And I think one one, one thing, mm -hmm. the main thing yeah. as far as letting go is concerned yeah. in my life <laughs> is relational. Oh, my I mean, gosh. I feel like the attachment to careers, money, mm. um, other things... Mm -hmm. It's it's possible. Like yeah. it's it's a thing you grapple with, but you're like, kama haiko haiko. But you see, relationally, yeah. my challenge with that is, if for example, if it's friendship or like mm. a, a, relationship, a relationship, like dating relationship, it's yeah. those things for. Why don't you wanna be here? Oh, like here is nice. For you. We were fine. Everything was fine. So I mean, make it make sense. Yeah. So relationally, yeah. that's like right up there. And mm -hmm. I think once you said that, it, it took me back to something that happened at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. I think once you said that. It took me back to something that happened at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Who? Eh. Hey. Oh, bring it Put out. Do you need a tissue? <laughs> Just, um, <laughs> what Thanks. happened was, um, the Lord started addressing me in as far as, um, a couple of things I was grappling with was concerned. Yeah. And some of them were like the changes, like the situational changes that you're talking mm -hmm. about in friendship mm -hmm. and then in almost relationships. Yeah. And so, um, he he led me to read the story of the wall of Jericho. Mm -hmm. And the guys, they go around the wall, they in silence at first, and then on the last day, they let out a shout and the wall falls. But then the thing I hadn't noticed about that story is towards the end, mm -hmm. they talk about, or rather it's written, cursed be he who tries to rebuild what the Lord has brought to ruins. And I'm oh. like, Lord, did you bring my friendships, my relation, almost relationship to ruins? Am I trying to rebuild it? Niambetu, just oh. tell me. And so I, wow. that thing, yeah. it stayed with me because it occurred to me that if I actually try and rebuild this thing to go back to what it used to be or what it was, mm. it's a curse. According to that scripture, it says, hey, me, the Lord, you're on your own, you're really doing a thing for yourself. Yeah. So relationships, relationally, yeah. like, whether it's, oh, we were friends and then we were not as close yeah. or we were, okay, <laughs> this is embarrassing. If my cousin, my cousin, if you watch this, just oh, know. Yes. So I had a cousin of mine who was so close, so, so close. So I don't have any brothers, mm. but then he was my brother, yeah. my brother. Yeah. And so um, what happened was when he got married... <laughs> <laughs> See, now he has a family and children and a life. And so we were close, yeah. but now I'm like, Kwani, you can't adopt me. We just be one big happy. And so like just 
releasing that, mm. releasing the fact that we could we could not hang out as much as we used to. We couldn't mm. just be in each other's space any kind of way. Yeah. And there was like all these other people to bring into the picture. Mm. That was hard. That was like those things for, but you were my brother before you were. <sighs> yeah, so <laughs> yeah, there was word. that. Yeah. There was <laughs> Like you're yeah. laughing at yourself. Nick, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> have I healed? I have healed. I have in fact healed. So mm -hmm. there's that. So like, do you think um, where you're at currently, mm -hmm. because you said you had to let go of what you thought you would be. Mm -hmm. You had to let go of, you know, a passion, like an actual, yeah. a thing you were good at that helped you cope with your introversion. Mm -hmm. And then now there's the relationships. Do, like, where do you think you're at now? Yeah. And what happened in between? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think I'd like to say you're possibly always going to be on a journey of becoming. Okay. Um, and like, <laughs> I want to say when I look at my younger self, mm. but yeah, like mm. a few years ago, mm. um, so stuck on this just has to work out this way. Right. Um, I think I used to be an OCD control freak. Mm. And I'm still fighting that. Like, you know, I'm You're those people who wake up at 2 a.m. to choir. To, re <laughs> to redo oh, no. a closet in colors. Or like just, at you know. two? Yeah, just fold them again because they just perhaps... So wait, were you like asleep and then it woke you up? Or like you couldn't sleep because well, of that? Yeah, yeah, like I'd probably be just <laughs> battling with for an hour. Overthinkers oh association, you know, um, <laughs> hey, it was crazy. You know, even things, small things like I'm in the kitchen and I'm right. washing up. Yeah. Like I lock everybody out. Uh, like you guys, you don't know there's how a way I want to do it. Like do it. You, you okay. guys are interfering, you know. Mm. Um, so I think the reason why I say it's like a journey of becoming, mm. I think you're constantly going to have to hold yourself mm. where you assess, okay, like if this was the notion, this mm. is what I thought would work out. Right. It does not necessarily mean in a bad way. Mm. Like, for example, um, there's a time I was working in between just um, transitioning between college, right? Mm. So I was at JQ at university doing IT. Mm. And then along the way, then the injury happened. Mm. And so for like an year, mm. I was home. Mm. And so all my friends are going to Campo. Um, back in our day, like you'd have like a gap year, so okay. you already had your gap year. So I've done my and this is how we got to know your age. <clears throat> uh, uh, so now uh, the age thing is, you yeah. know, but like so, I've done my volunteering for a whole year. Then right. now here I am, finally in campus. Then I've only done like a semester and a half. Mm. Then I have this injury, and okay. again for a whole year, I have to be home. Okay. And everybody's going to school. Mm. And so you start feeling like you're a failure, okay. um, struggling with, oh my gosh, how am I ever gonna catch up to everybody else right. doing that thing? Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden you realize we're actually a few more people grappling. Like, mm. you know, as you touch with your friends, you realize mm. guys are also struggling with their you. journey. Right. As much as someone's in Campo, mm. probably fees is an issue. Mm. Um, but also, this is not the career they want to actually study for. But folks have told you, my oh friend, my gosh. Like, there's so many, ooh, I know Japan enough people who Europe. studied one thing and are not, and doing, are not doing it. the right? same thing now. Exactly. I'm one of them. Yeah. I know you're one of them. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and yeah. so, like, it was a really, I mean, Linda, when I look back, mm. I really struggled, mm. you know. Um, because my folks, like, had this ideology, you're right. smart, your mm. brains should be used for this. Yeah. And so the first issues, but, like, now the inner work in my heart is mm. God starting to sort of show me, hey, imagine I kind of want you to okay. go into like ministry right. and, and focus on like um, serving and stuff like that. Yeah. But then you're here thinking, hey, how do I even tell people? <laughs> uh, I want to stop going Guys, to Guys, I know we had a dream, but to now, let's, let's have go. other dreams now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To church and mm. just, you know, do yeah. stuff. Um, and so that transition was like quite intense, mm. I remember, you mm. know. But what I love about it is at that point in time, I think, one, my parents are prayerful people. Okay. Um, and then I had community around me who are also like, okay, if you feel that this is what you're being led into, let's hold you up. You want to exploit? Mm -hmm. Come by and buy her. And mm -hmm. especially my grandma. Like my yes, grandma used to, to tell me. supportive yeah, family and friends. My grandma used to say, um, you can always start something. You'd rather start it off. But right. midway, if you realize it's not working out, mm. you can always lean back. Oh, I like that. That was like really powerful for yeah. me. I was like, hey, I'm Kuma happy about try it. Kumana fail nani sawa. Imagine. Because yeah. I think we're not told enough yeah. that part of letting go mm. our 
inculcated ideas of what mm. we are becoming mm. is also part of letting go of the things that might not serve us mm. as we are becoming. Okay. And I think that's like really powerful. Yeah. To And then also pray and trust God mm. that, um, you know, I was telling you earlier today, I think Jeremiah for me is like one of those most powerful scriptures, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Where he says, and I know this is like one of us is we've crammed and mm. memorized to heart, yeah. right? Yeah. For I know the plans that I have for you, you right. know, plans to prosper you, to give you a future and a hope. Mm. But then I think the in between where we don't see, you know, mm. one, I think even trusting God, he's an invisible God. Like, Yet he is Listen, supreme. I understand <laughs> the place of trust, but also can you give me a plan? I wish you could calm Just down. And Break it down for me, me in a way that I understand so that I may trust exactly, better. Yeah. Okay. And so I think our struggle in terms of letting go of things that we have perceived for ourselves mm -hmm. is because we can't see the end. Mm. But yet you have to trust that God who actually knows you, yeah. he's actually saying, yeah, yeah. imagine I have the plans in back we show for mm. you. Mm. Till eternity. Mm. But you just have to trust. Mm -hmm. But then, I don't know about you, but mm. I struggle. <laughs> like, hey, you have to keep Redefining that you actually oh, bro, me, here. What you need, Gwambie? Apo, trust is relative sometimes. Exactly. It's very like relative. You have to keep affirming what? me. Yeah. Telling me over and over and over yeah. and over again. Yeah. So, like, I think the struggle is that we, as we're learning to let go, mm -hmm. have to really, really trust. Yeah. That if God is beginning to show you a path. Yeah. That you choosing to walk in it would mean you will not see everything. Mm. You know, it's like uh, guys used to say, it's almost like you sign this MOU that's a blank document mm -hmm. and you don't know the fine details. Yeah. Watch out, you know, like when you're signing a loan for a bank, <laughs> it's very fine print. So you almost have like, to please read the, the fine, fine glass. To okay, read. so also, there's those of us who agree to terms and conditions without reading. Exactly. Like, you just, personally, Sijawa is all my ways of it. Just, but yeah. I think when you say that, the thing that comes to mind is the aspect of like, mm -hmm. so, okay, great. Yeah. Um, he has good plans for us mm -hmm. and for me and for you. Yeah. But then you see those plans sometimes don't look like what we envisioned. Mm. And so what you're asking of me is, no, no, let go of the thing you know and mm -hmm. then just just believe that yeah. there's another thing coming. Mm -hmm. So one of my personal struggles has been yeah. this year, something that God had to address was mm -hmm. the the idea that if I let go of this, then what? Mm. You know, what if this is the best? Like, this mm. is the best that could have happened. This yeah. is the best possible situation or outcome. Mm. Let's say it's the best relationship I've ever been in. Right. It's the best, like, job I've ever had. It's the mm. best, you know, whatever situation or place or thing or relationship that is. Yeah. The aspect of God telling you, okay, but there's better. Or it's possible that this is not all there is for you. Mm. And... Hey, you kitu inani inani confound inani shinda because yeah. wah it's hard because hey ni mesema because sana but technically <laughs> all I'm saying is this yeah. you see this like this seat for example mm -hmm. this is a very comfortable seat yeah. I know this seat I can full like throw my full weight on this seat and believe and trust and it has been it's it's proven that it can hold me up exactly but then trust is like saying like stand here mm -hmm. then take a seat but you don't see any seat there mm -hmm. and so. Wa, hey, Ningori, it's a lot. Say. Na niki anguka, na niki kosa. Like mm. yesterday, I was having a conversation with a friend, and she was telling me how, mm. oh yeah, the thing about letting go and and all that is mm. there's a trust element, there's mm -hmm. an obedience element, yeah. there's a intentions element, mm -hmm. and the realization that God is so sovereign that He doesn't even owe me an explanation or a reward for my obedience. <sighs> that it's possible that I will stand here and like throw my full weight without seeing that seat. Yeah. And somehow, I won't crash and burn, mm -hmm. but at the same time, God is not gonna, like, he's not obliged mm. to be like, oh, thank you so much for listening to the instruction that I gave you. I owe you Here now. Is a, now I owe you. Here's, yeah. a, here's a thing. Mm. And so, sometimes we're so transactional in the way we perceive letting go to be that. Mm. I'm like, okay, so if I let go of this model or this mm -hmm. version of this person or thing, mm -hmm. show me the better one. Like I'm expecting a better one because see, you told me to let go of this, but the right. guarantee is, first of all, it's not there. And mm -hmm. also it's not something we should be entitled to. Yeah. That's yeah. A, again, my two cents, my two cents. <gasps> but uh, it's crazy. do you think it's possible mm -hmm. um, that there are things you've let go of? Yeah. Are there things that you really so oh yeah this was worth letting go and mm. are there things you're still grappling with for those yeah. ones of eh hey, but I thought mm. yeah so do you have those moments I think now when I look at the journey um, into like you said 
pastoral, going into ministry. Yeah. Now I look back at the impact in the small things that I've been able to do mm. because of the platform of ministry mm. in terms of transforming lives just by showing up, mm -hmm. right? Because I think one of the beautiful things about community like Kimbele Mbele mm. is we've seen ourselves grow, even like me and you, right. you know, as friends. Mm. Like the version of you wow, that I saw. Met yeah, it's been, a, it's been a minute. A hey, good minute, you we know. thank God. Yeah, like the version of you or the version of me that you see now yeah. has probably gone through this some change, right? Yeah. And having to partly show up mm. because I, like I said, now relationships for me are, mm. imagine it might not mean that I'll show up 100% mm. to everything, mm. but the version that I get to see, whether mm. it's a 2%, 20%, yeah. means that I still mm -hmm. can enjoy seeing what impact we can have on each other. Okay. And so it's not just the transactional element for, mm. I need some good things from Linda. Yeah. She's the hookup person. Right. She'll get it right for me. Yeah. But then it's letting myself show up and say, hey, mm. there is something beautiful in mm. this that I meet when I'm in this mm. space. Mm. So I honestly cannot see it any other way. Okay. And, I, and I love to say it's walking into graduations and seeing people who mm. struggled with their journey mm. and you are a small part of, mm. hey, let's keep going. Let's encourage one another. Let's spy yeah. each other on yeah. like scripture says, yeah. right? And then seeing them at graduation. Mm. Then a few years later, seeing them walk down the right, aisle and saying, right. <gasps> yeah. So it pays off. Hey. Oh my God, it does pay off yeah. to stay faithful, to stay mm. here. Yeah. And even to just thank God for the miracle of being yeah. alive. Um, I was sharing with a friend, uh, one of the stuck things I remember about like the dance team we had when we were mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. is there's a friend of ours who got really unwell with um, meningitis. Okay. Um, and like I was so... I didn't know too much about meningitis when we were okay. in that age, right? But she had the type that was bacterial and it was, I think, affecting her brain at okay. that point. Yeah. And like this chick was, I mean, you know those straight A students? Mm. I mean, I've always been like an average student when I tried really hard, I'm a good student. So listen, when you have but kids, please you, you, me, you know me, I Maybe was I'll number one. All our truth. parents were number one, but like me and I a report card, please. But imagine in Campo, I said getting class. the straight A's. I okay. just wasn't paying attention. This is the thing. I guess. It, it's possible. Uh, anyway, it's possible. Yeah. Mm. But so, so this friend of ours, right, like really gets unwell. Okay. Um, and we walk the journey of going to hospital every so often, but she passes on. Like mm. in the prime. Mm. I kid you not, like at um, her university, because she was attached to Kenyatta Hospital and like her university, she was like one of their top students. Okay. And like, you know, those people who you're waiting to see what mm. prosperity mm. will right. look like for her right. because she's just in her prime. Yeah. And I think that thing like really gutted the core of who I am as a yeah. person. Yeah. Because how do you let go of a person you've seen mm. prospering so much mm. in their journey? Mm. And then now all of a sudden, yeah. Like it's cut off. It's gone. And you're like, God, was this it? Like her life story was just meant to end here. Yeah. But now when you look at it, you're like, so then the number of times that uh, God allows you to be alive in sense of years or numbers of days, mm. man, then it means you have to make it count. Mm. You can't just let go at showing up midway for yourself. Mm. Because who knows, you know, and I yeah. think that like really changes your perspective yeah. in terms of there are things that we hold on to so much mm. because they perceive in a certain notion. Mm. Um, but like another stuck thing that um, hit me was one of our life coaches once stopped us in a class and said, mm. I want you to close your eyes and envision mm -hmm. uh, the day you die. Mm -hmm. Okay. Imagine the people in the room and what perhaps they'll say about you mm -hmm. or the impact and the life yeah. that you lived. Mm. And then I was like, Hmm. Okay. What would they say? Huh. But that, that exercise is very trippy because I we are also made to like do it. it. Guys, uh, for your, those of you who haven't yes, tried sorry. this before, basically the exercise entails like mm -hmm. what she's saying. You you can either think through what people will say. You can. For us, we had to write it down. Mm. We had to write eulogies. Like, what do you want people to say about you when you die? Mm. And then you read it, and then you asked, oh, so between what people you want people to say and what is the reality now. What do you think is the thing you need to do in between? Yeah. And so that thing is very trippy. It so is trippy. It's really trippy. Yeah. But you know now what keeps bringing you back to it is, mm -hmm. if you think about it, yeah. God forbid, but the day we die, right? Right. Like you don't go into your coffin with your certificates, mm -hmm. with your bank account, yeah. and like nobody writes like on top of your coffin. Like her what? balance was ETC. Yeah. Her assets she had were good credits. 50. She had good credits. <laughs> yeah. CRB had not listed. Yeah. And I was like, 
Hmm. Yeah. So then come back to this lifelong ideology you have of yourself and becoming mm. this sort of person. So then how do you involve God in mm. helping you along the way yeah. to not get so inculcated? And I mean, I love, I love studying. You and I love studying. Mm. Like we're always going about, But, hey, what's, mm-hmm. what are you doing next? Hey, what are yeah. you doing next? We are nerds for a reason. And they're amazing. Yeah. Owning it. No wonder mm. the four eyes. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. But like, if you think about it, mm. I think those are almost like sideshows as far as God is concerned. Okay. And he's more involved in who are you becoming? What's mm. your character like? Mm. How do people perceive your presence when you're mm. with them? Mm. Do they really feel seen and heard? You know, are you showing up to mm. become the very best version of you mm. that is carried into eternity? Mm. And I think when you get to there, you're like, ah! It made up, sense Lord. all along. It baby. was connected. <laughs> no, there's something I think you've said that has uh, triggered something in my head, mm. or in my brain rather, mm. the aspect of becoming. Mm. And then you know, the things that you said you grappled with and the disappointment that comes with that. Mm. So two things for me when it comes to letting go is mm. the disappointment. Mm. For instance, like, yes, I let go of this yeah. in in like some sort of anticipation of a better thing mm. and I didn't see the better thing come. Yeah. And so the question becomes, oh, should I have let it go? Mm. Did I make the right decision? Um, and then we get like into this thing with God for where were you? What are you doing? Why are you not doing anything? Mm. Are you going to come through? If so, when? Just, yeah. you know, give me something. Give me something to work with. Mm. And so th- like that disappointed, the disappointment and the disappointed state is something that we, I think, need to deal with even as we let go because mm. sometimes the thing on the other end of the release is not what we envisioned it to be. Yeah. And then not the becoming. Mm. Um, so I'm a very passionate person. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so what happens is like when something is close to my heart, it's like nahuko ndani, mm. rent free. It's, it's uko. It's embedded. And then one time someone told me, you know, you're going to have to learn to live with open hands. And I'm like, But hands are meant to hold people, things, you know, just, just, I want to, I want you to feel safe. Yeah. And this is where the place of control things mm-hmm. come in because it's like, you are close to my heart. So I'm, I'm going to try and keep you right there. Yeah. But then living with open hands is a thing I've had to practice mm. and unlearn and relearn over time. Because yeah. now, for instance, if you got stuck mm. in the, but I want to become a dancer, but I want to become a model, but I want to become a designer. Yeah. It's so hard for any other thing to find its place in your life because you're mm-hmm. still holding on to that thing because it it it's it's the thing it's all you know mm-hmm. or it's 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 it comes with like a sense of security yeah. or I'm in control of this because I know this I'm familiar with this mm-hmm. and so having to learn how to like learning to live with open hands has come with yes the disappoint the dis- disappointment from mm-hmm. it may not look like what I thought it would look like after letting go mm. but then the submission of okay the lord has said so mm. we answer to him and him alone mm. and that's fine mm. and then there's something i was watching that talked about the potency of non-attachment listen uh, me it again me the, the things i'm learning potency of, of non-attachment guys please so what it means Drops. what it basically means is it still goes back to the thing of living with open hands in a way it means it's possible to want something but it's also possible for you to want it enough to lose it as well like at the same time so on one hand i really want this thing but on the other hand i'm okay with not getting it so like i'm attached just enough but then if it doesn't happen a pianisawa like it doesn't mean it doesn't like mean this is the end of things So that potency of non-attachment is something that, let's say, for example, even in ministry, um, <laughs> you know those things that we do for so long that end up defining us. Yeah. Do you know, like, one day God really could tell you, okay, it's enough, you've done enough, thank you, well, you know, well done, good and faithful servant. Do you think that you're in a place that right now, if the Lord asked you to let go of anything, so the way he asked Simon Peter, do you love me more than these? And, and it was like, more than this like this is everything your studies your mm-hmm. career your relationships mm-hmm. your skills your, all your everything box so your like if today god asked you do you think like if you're honest yeah. there are things in your life that you would actually have to need like you would need a moment with mm-hmm. like hey god what like do you think 
you're there yet? Do you think there are things that you still, the open hands thing is just like, you're young.